The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring young America's favorite couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Let's look in at the Nelson home. It's 8 p.m. Dinner is over, and the head of the house is sitting in the living room. Ozzie is right there beside her. <laughs> oh, um... You know, Harriet, out of the whole 20th time when I feel elated, here, right after dinner, best time of all to just relax and read a little. Mm-hmm. Think you got something there, Ozzie. Let's see what I'll read tonight. H.G. Wells' Outline of History? No. Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire? Oh, what's that uh, right over there, dear? This one on the table? Yeah. It's the November issue of Super Movie Magazine. I think I'll browse through that a while. <laughs> Gosh, you know, these magazines are all the same. Now, just look at pages four, five, and six. Nothing but photographs of movie stars kissing each other. I wonder if they don't ever get tired of that. I guess not. It says continued on page 103. <laughs> Say, there's some interesting articles this month, though. That's a romance and glamour issue. Mm-hmm. Just glancing through it here, the glamour department doesn't seem to be doing so well this month. Oh, really? Now, just listen to this. Gwendolyn Latour, pictured here at the Brown Derby with Garvin Peterson, is going to marry Cedric Parker as soon as she is divorced from her present husband, Horace Seabrook. Gosh. But this probably won't be until June, says Mr. Seabrook's fiance, Peggy Travers, because her husband won't let her go to Reno until she breaks her engagement to Talbot Dillon. <laughs> well, it certainly sounds complicated. It sure does. I think I'll just stick to you. Oh, gee, thanks, kid. <laughs> <laughs> now, I frankly admit some of the most miserable days of my life were spent as a bachelor. Oh, you're just saying that so I'll bake a chocolate cake. No, no, I'm not. I really mean it. What didn't you like about being a bachelor? Well, I had to sew my own buttons on, darn my own socks, wash out my own shirt, and eat dinner alone. But things are different now. Yeah, I don't have to eat dinner alone anymore. <laughs> you know, it sounds kind of silly now thinking of you as a bachelor. Yeah, I remember at that time I used my middle name, George. Did you know that? Well, of course. Don't you remember the first ring you gave me? The inscription you had on it? Yeah, I don't think I do. Well, I'll never forget it. I thought at first you were telling me where to go. It said G to H. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. You know, I'm glad you went back to the name Ozzy, though. It fits you better. George sounds too formal for you. It's a nice name, though. Oh, I like it. Some of my favorite people are named George, but for you, oh, I like an unusual name better, and, oh, I don't know. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry is named George. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wonder if they really expect people to believe some of this stuff here in these magazines. Like what? Now, just listen to this. Did you know that Ernie Pagano, the famous movie producer, has three swimming pools, hot, cold, and seven up? <laughs> I knew there was something I wanted to tell you. It says in that issue that Throckmorton Hamilton and his wife have split up. Oh, that's too bad. Mm-hmm. He seemed like an ideal husband. Well, I don't think I'd go that far. What makes you say that? Well, now, for one thing, he absolutely refused to buy his wife a mink coat. Well, darling, I don't have a mink coat either. Yeah, but he came right out and said no instead of promising her one and then not getting it for her like a gentleman. <laughs> You know, people talk about glamour and picture stars. I wonder if they'll ever recapture the glamour of old Hollywood of the silent days. Clara Bow and Theda Barra and Francis X. Bushman. Yeah, Hollywood must have been interesting back in those old days. Yet in some ways, it was like a big country town. Mm-hmm. I understand that not so many years ago, they used to pick lemons on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. Where did we meet, Ozzy? <laughs> Now, you know very well where we met. <laughs> Stop trying to tear down my romantic appeal. Oh, Ozzie Nelson. Every time you read a movie magazine, you picture yourself as a glamour boy, don't you? Well, don't you? Yes. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Come 
come with me to the Roseland Ballroom. What's the matter with the Palladium? It's cheaper at the Roseland Ballroom. Oh, I see. Oh, Mrs. Parkington, you are beautiful. Kiss me. Oh, but suppose Mr. Parkington arrives home suddenly. Don't worry about Mr. Parkington, Mrs. Parkington. Why not? Where's he? With Mrs. Skeffington. <laughs> That's enough now. You've had your fun. Well, I did pretty well, didn't I? What do you think of me as the great lover? Well, of course, dear. Being your wife, I'm naturally a little prejudiced. Oh, yes, of course. But wait a minute now. Maybe I'd better think that one over a little. <laughs> oh, say, before you put down that magazine, look at that back page. There's a contest there that might interest you. The back page? Mm-hmm. Let me see. Have you ever been offered a penny for your thoughts? If you have, then it's time you stop thinking so cheap. Turn your imagination into real money. You may have a gold mine hidden in your head. Well, that sounds easy enough. You just take your hat off and discover a hidden fortune. Say, wait a minute. You think you're kidding. You've given me an idea. Oh, no. By golly, I've always figured that's how I'd make my second million as a writer. Your second million? Yes, I've given up hopes for the first million long ago. <laughs> it says, if you think you have literary talent... Why not prove it to yourself and us by sitting down tonight and writing a 600-word essay on glamour? Go on. Tell us in your own words what glamour is, what it means, what part it plays in our current pattern of life. Oh, don't tell me you're really going to enter that contest. I certainly am. All you need to win is a pencil and a paper and some brains. I can get the pencil and paper at the Owl Drugstore. <laughs> what about the brains? Sears and Roebuck? <laughs> Anastasia, sometimes I think you're crazy. Well, go ahead. Call me crazy. They said Edison was crazy. They said Robert Fulton was crazy. They said Joe Cacolach was crazy. Who's Joe Cacolach? He's my uncle. He was crazy. Ozzy, <laughs> uh, are you really serious about entering that contest? Well, certainly. I have a tremendous advantage living here in Hollywood. Well, what do you mean? Well, we get a chance to see glamour at first hand here. Oh, are you kidding? We haven't even been to a drive-in for three weeks, and I don't know when we went to a nightclub last. Gee, that's right, isn't it? But you've given me an idea. I could be ready in 15 minutes. Ready? Well, sure. In order to write about glamour, you have to study it at first hand. And what spot in the world is more glamorous than the Tacoma nightclub right here in Hollywood, huh? Well, I hate to admit it, but I think you got something there. And if I win third prize of $200, we ought to break even on the night. Yeah. <laughs> Third prize is 200 What are the others? Well, it says second prize is 500 The first prize is to be announced later. Probably about 1000 Well, we'd better tell Gloria we won't have dinner at home. Oh, gee. I hope she won't mind staying home alone with the children. Oh, Gloria! Gloria! Did you call me Mrs. Nelson? <laughs> Gloria, we're going to the Tracombo Cafe tonight. Oh, that's nice. You don't happen to have a date this evening, do you? Well, nothing important. Uh, do you think it'd be possible for you to break it? Oh, thank you, Mr. Nelson. I'd break a date any time to go to the true combo. <laughs> you don't understand, Gloria. No, you see, I'm taking Mrs. Nelson. Yes, it's better that way. It wouldn't look right for you and me to go there alone. <laughs> what we mean is, would you stay home with the children? All home. Well, I'll do it. Thanks, Gloria. We hate to ask you to do this, but Mr. Nelson's writing an article about glamour, and he wants to get a little first-hand information. Well, I'd be happy to help out any way I can. Oh, well, thank you, Gloria. I didn't realize you were interested in glamour. Oh, yes. Some of my friends call me the Maria Montez of the Union Stockyard. <laughs> Gloria, we'll have to be going soon. That's but... all right. Go right ahead. Have a good time. And if you see Van Johnson... Yes? Just give him this message for me. What message? Oh! <laughs> That's all. Oh, oh, and Gloria, remember, if you want us, we'll be at the Tacombo nightclub. And while we're gone, looking at the children every once in a while. Oh, and be sure the doors are locked. Roger. 
<laughs> Ozzie, where in the world did she get that Roger from? It's strictly G.I., isn't it? Yeah, I taught to. I was an M.P. in the last war, you know. Ozzie Nelson, you were a Boy Scout in the last war, and you know it. That's what I said, M.P. Mouse Patrol. Why don't you phone for taxi cab while I go upstairs and get dressed? Okay. Let's see now. What's the phone number? The taxi? Oh, yes. Taxis are sure hard to get these days. Would you please place your call again, sir? Oh, all right. Oh, that's the job getting dressed? Quick, I didn't even get a cab yet. How do I look? You look wonderful, as usual. Little Ricky here just paid his mother a very nice compliment. He said I look sharp as a tack. That's pretty good for four years old, isn't it? It sure is. Glad I have my best suit on tonight, too. How does your old man look, Ricky? I said, how do I look, Ricky? Sharp as a marble, Dad. <laughs> we just got to get that kid's tonsils taken out. <laughs> oh, well, let's go, Harry. Let's look over the glamour. Sweet words, if they're not true, don't tear my heart like it was paper, because my heart loves only you. You can't go round, sweethearting others. And then pretend that I'm yours exclusively. Love must be true. Mean what you're saying, unless you do. Don't sweetheart me. That's how the song was originally written. And then the torch singers took it over and developed it into everything but Don't Sweetheart Me. Don't sweetheart me because you're mean to me. Why must you be mean to me? You know you're just my bill and you know you always will for I'll be loving you Why I say music, my stroke, please don't sweetheart me. Then there's the extra word man. He really butchers it up with added words like this. I don't sweetheart me, oh honey baby, if you do, you do be sorry. I know what to do to you. And if you do, then you'll regret it. Wait and see. Don't sweetheart me, and don't forget it. Last week you heard me say it, heart or I'll repay it, me. And then the dance bands take over the melody and write their super special arrangements and we hear... Don't sweetheart me. and Harry at the Tucumbo Cafe, where Ozzie expects to get some ideas on glamour in the hope of winning the magazine contest he's going to enter. Their taxi is just pulling up in front of the door. This is it, Tucumbo Cafe. Okay, thank you, miss. How do you like driving a taxi cab? Oh, fine, thank you. Sort of runs in our family. My two sisters are cab drivers. My mother drives the cab, and my father drives the cab. Your father drives the cab, too, hey? Yeah. He wears the wig, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, he 
Yes, hour 35. All right, here you are. And here's a tip for you. Oh, thanks. That money will come in very handy. I'm buying my grandmother a pair of eyeglasses. She's 80 years old, you know. Really? 80 years old? Well, it's about time she had a pair of glasses. She needs them, doesn't she? I'll say. It's a tough job driving them Greyhound buses. <laughs> Well, here it is, the exclusive and popular Tracombo. Sure looks pretty from the outside. I hope we can get a good table. Yeah, so do I. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, how many, please? A uh, table for two, please. Oh, well, let's see. I can give you number 19. It's a nice little secluded table behind that potted palm. Well, you can give us a table right out in the open. This is my wife. Oh. Very good, sir. Uh, Tyrone! Show this lady and gentleman to number 58. No, number 58? Yes, sir. Step right this way, please. <laughs> Goodness, how much further back are you taking us? Just keep following me, please. This is quite a walk. I'm sorry, but we're very crowded tonight. Oh. Where's our table? In North Hollywood? <laughs> oh, hello, Dorothy. Will I see you later? You might be able to. You can borrow a telescope. Mm. Well, here's your table. Goodness. What direction is the dance floor? Just directly south, southeast. <laughs> In fact, on a clear night, you can see the orchestra quite plain from here. Uh, may we have a menu, please, Tyrone? No, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to bring a menu with me. Well, can't you go and get us one? Again, I'm so sorry. I only make this trip once a night. I ain't as young as I used to be, you know. Yes, it is quite a hike to where we came from. Well, never mind. Just bring us a couple of ham sandwiches and some coffee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, let me see. Mm. Which way is the kitchen? <laughs> oh, yes, this way. Mm. Well, darling, I guess you haven't thought of anything for the magazine contest yet, have you? Well, how can you find out anything about Glamour when they put you at an isolated table way back here? It's isolated, all right. I'll have to admit, though, it's a beautiful nightclub. Yes, it is. Look at those decorations they have painted on the wall. Don't you think they're kind of risque? Gosh, naked beard glasses. <laughs> Cigar, cigarettes, split guns. Cigar, cigarettes, split guns. Split guns? In a nightclub? Why, that's silly. You think so? Wait till you see the floor show. Cigar, cigarettes. <laughs> Do you see any movie stars, Harriet? No, I don't. Of course, this isn't exactly a ringside table. Happy New Year! How are you doing, baby? <laughs> I, I guess I'm doing all right, thank you. Well, how about a dance, baby? Come on, let's give me a dance. No, come on, dance the dance. Look, I don't think I did very much... Uh, just in... a moment. I happen to be this lady's husband. Well, so why do you want to dance with you? <laughs> You've been drinking, haven't you? I certainly have. Uh, what time is it? Time? Oh, it's, uh, just 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock? Oh, oh, 12 o'clock. Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, goodbye. Say, just a minute. You're perfectly sober now. Well, of course. It's against the law to be drunk after 12 o'clock. <laughs> Say, Ozzy, I think your... I think your watch is fast, dear. It's only 11.55. 11.55? Oh, that's different. Straighten up and fly right. <laughs> oh, boy, what a character. See, I think I hear the orchestra starting. Would you like to dance with your husband? I'd love to. If you don't think we'd be too conspicuous. Well, let's chance it. Enjoyed dancing with you, Ozzy. Oh, thank you. I enjoyed it, too. 
Did you get any inspirations on glamour while you were dancing and looking at people? No, I didn't. I'm beginning to wonder if I know what glamour really is. Oh, well, don't start worrying about it, making yourself miserable, dear. Oh, well, pardon me, but would you folks care for anything else? No, I don't think so. Just give me a check, please. We're leaving now. All right, let me see. What did you have? Uh, we had two ham sandwiches and a cup of coffee. How much is that? And we twenty seven dollars and forty five cents. <laughs> Okay, here's the money. Oh, thank you, sir. Now I can go to the Palladium tomorrow night. Straighten up from Saturday. <laughs> oh, dear, it's too bad the evening had to be such a fizzle, Ozzy. Yes, yeah, spending all this money and still not finding out what I wanted to. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir. As you know, I am the head waiter. I am terribly sorry I gave you that bad table. I just found out you're Ozzy Nelson and Harry Hill. Oh, that's all right. Oh, no, no, it isn't. Any young lady as truly glamorous as your wife should always be seated at a ringside table. Well, gosh, that, say just a minute. Did you say glamorous? I certainly did. And furthermore, she's the first person who's been in here in months who really has glamour. Gee, honey, what a dope I am out trying to discover what glamour is. And all the time, I'm married to it. Oh, I see. <laughs> Gosh, now I know I can win that contest. Oh, uh, I hope you won't think this as an imposition, but uh, several of our guests wanted to ask if you and your glamorous wife would perhaps sing a song together. Well, I honestly don't think we know it all the way through. Let's see, together. We stroll the lane. Oh, no, 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 no. You misunderstand me. It doesn't have to be together. I'll sing any song at all. Oh, I see. As long as you sing together. <laughs> Look, which is Abbott and which is Costello and who's on third? No, we'll be happy to sing a song. <laughs> really, we'll be very happy to sing a song for you, but there'll be a slight charge. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Uh, how much are you going to charge us? That'll be $27.45. Butch McHugh from 3rd Avenue was put into class 1A. The gang at Duffy's Tavern got a letter from him today. This army life, says he, is okie doke by me. You guys should see the gals that are building up my morale. I'm dancing with the mamas with the moolah. They must have drafted me into society. It took a uniform to show the dames my charms. Now you ought to see the babe that I'm holding in my arms. White as mud and they fill us and Kalula. They take me home for muffins and tea. I used to chauffeur for a guy for 30 bucks a week. And now I'm dancing with his daughter, cheek to cheek. I'm dancing with the mamas with the moolah. Cause the army made a wow wow out of me. Good evening, Corporal. Are you having a nice I time? I certainly am. Why, I used to pay them Roseland dames a dime a dance. And now I'm having fun for free and with debutantes. Have you met Gwendolyn and Ethel and Tallulah? Oh, how do you do? They'd like to take you home for muffins and tea. A pleasure, I'm sure. When it is over, oh boy, I'll never have to work. And those guys used to think that I was just an illiterate character. I'm standing with the mamas with the moolah. Cause the army made a wow wow out of me. Look at me, see I'm standing. you've been working all night on that darn contest? Well, this typewriter is no help. Every time I hit the letter J, it comes out a Y. Well, honey, don't blame me. You're the yerk who owns the typewriter. <laughs> Gee, Harriet, now that I've sent in my entry, I wonder when we're going to hear the results of the contest. Almost any day now, I expect. Say, so you seem pretty confident that you're going to win a prize. 
Well, if I said my essay was wonderful, that'd sound conceited. So I'll be modest and just say it's great. Would you like to hear it? I have a copy right here. I certainly would. Well, it's called The Girls of the Nation Seek Glorification, or They Clamor for Glamour. That's a pretty cute title. Thank you. And the essay starts like this. When we think of glamour, we almost immediately think of sweater girls. And by the way, there are two types of sweaters. Sweaters that look good, and sweaters that look like sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd make a little joke there. <laughs> well, that's little enough. <laughs> Glamour is a magic combination of various elements. On a beautiful woman, it's exotic perfume, lipstick, and personality that makes her tempting. While on a salad, it's rope for cheese and Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> oh, I'm sure the women will love that comparison. Thank you. I thought it was rather clever myself. You see, I go on now, and I explain that whether you're being intrigued by a woman or a salad, the proper dressing plays a very important part. <laughs> Another little joke. <laughs> yes. Now, as a matter of fact, however, salad can be very glamorous, too, you know. Well, maybe you're right, but I never heard of a wife suing her husband because he was chasing around with a salad. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a great ending for the article. Good. Well, I wind it up by saying... There are so many glamorous women in America that our nation will soon be known as the Fassa Nation. <laughs> and another little, little joke. joke. <laughs> Don't you think my composition sounds good? Oh, it's swell, dear. Well, aren't you impressed with my writing ability? Oh, oh, yes, dear, but... But what? Well, I wouldn't give up the band for a few days yet. <laughs> No, I can't understand why I haven't heard from Super Movie Magazine yet. Well, darling, for one thing, it takes several days for mail to come from New York all the way out here to California. I know, but today's the day they're supposed to notify the winners. And I have a strange feeling, Harriet, that I'm going to win that first prize. I hope so. Adding a thousand dollars to what we already have in the bank would be pretty nice. I'll say. Just imagine, a thousand and forty-eight dollars. <laughs> Of course, they didn't announce what the first prize would be, but I'm sure it'll be something like that. This letter just arrived from New York, Mr. Nelson. Certainly the contest, sure. Let me have it, Gloria. <laughs> Harriet, listen to this. Mr. Ozzie Nelson, 1847 Rogers Road, Hollywood, California. Dear sir, we take great pleasure in advising you that the judges of our Glamour Story Contest have selected your contribution as the winning manuscript. You see, Harriet, and you thought I couldn't write. Oh, it wasn't oh. that, Ozzy. I always figured there was some sort of a catch to that contest. Oh, gosh, what do we do with all the money? Oh, gee, how much did you win? Let me see. We are hereby notifying you. You have won the first prize. A free trip to Hollywood. Just what we needed. <laughs> Radio Service.